guys, today I am showing you how to make homemade meatballs and spaghetti squash all in the same slow cooker, all at the same time, all while having a whole lot of fun. What a mess. I have spaghetti squash everywhere. Hey guys, welcome back to my camper kitchen. I am Chris from RecipesAtCrock.com and today we are showing you a nifty trick to make if you want to make homemade meatballs alongside spaghetti squash all in the same slow cooker. So the other day I decided I was going to try and make our meatballs the way that we have on the site in a couple different ways. I think we have an air fryer version of them and then we have a crock pot version of them. And I was wanting to make some but I also had bought a spaghetti squash and was wanting to cook it at the same time and I got to thinking, you know what? They both cook about the same amount of time in the slow cooker, so why don't I figure out a way to put them all in together? That's what I did. And everyone around here was so excited because they loved eating this dish once it was all put together. This is one of those ones that they've been talking about ever since I made it the last time and so I decided to make it again and show you guys how I made it. I just got a spaghetti squash and from the grocery store and I tried to get one of the smaller ones because I'm trying to cook other things in the slow cooker with it. So I got as small as I could get. I'm going to show you a trick that you can use if your spaghetti squash is too big too here in a minute. But And then all I've done to this is I've washed the outside of it and then I've taken a knife and I have just went around it to give it a few vent holes around. Think about like how you do a baked potato when you're trying to do a baked potato. Oftentimes you score it. So with this spaghetti squash, I've taken a piece of foil and I'm not trying to seal it in or anything at all really. I just kind of want to make an easy way for it to get outside of my slow cooker. So I've got foil that I wrapped around it because I'm going to cook my meatballs down in alongside of it all alongside the area here. Okay? I'll show you here in a moment. Um, well, I guess I could show you right now what this looks like. So we just got our spaghetti squash in there. He's kind of hogging up a lot of room, but it'll be alright. We've got a little room over here and a little room back here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take any homemade meatball that you enjoy and toss them in here. Now, I haven't tried this with pre-made meatballs, like the frozen kind. I would imagine you could do them this way. I just haven't tested it, so I'm not really sure how they would cook without adding extra liquid and all that kind of stuff. Because we're not going to add any liquid. Because we've already, the, the um, ground beef is going to um, release its own liquid when it cooks. So I have a full batch of our meatball parmesan. Um, originally when I made this recipe, I did a half batch because I was like, well, that's only one squash and that's a little bit of area. But my family has demanded a double batch of the meatballs. They very much loved the squash. They just wanted more meatballs with it. So what I'm going to do is carefully place these meatballs all in alongside this guy. They're going to have to stack on each other and they might stick together a little bit. But once we get done cooking, I can kind of break them back apart. It's not going to be that big of a deal. If you are low carb, our meatball parmesan recipe, which I will link in this blog post and down below, it is low carb. If you're not low carb and you want to use our other homemade meatball, it will work just the same way. So all we're doing is we're play, we're generally kind of just placing these meatballs down in here as closely as we can because we're going to have to layer them by the end of all of this anyways. So just placing these guys in here, it really doesn't matter. The squash is going to get pulled out at the end and we're going to mix sauce in and, and all that kind of stuff here towards the end. So it's not, it's nothing um, that can't kind of be undone later anyways. Just try not to smush your meatballs. They're going to lay on top of each other and probably smush themselves a little bit, but let's not help them in the process. Otherwise, we'll end up with a little bit of a meatloaf at the end. That's okay. So we're going to just keep 
laying these guys in here it's going to make a pretty full crock pot by the time we are done this is our six quart ninja multi cooker you can make it in any kind of slow cooker i would definitely do a six quart though so we're going to keep layering these guys just keep going until we get them all in there the original or the half recipe that i made was 12 meatballs so this is about 24. that gives you kind of an idea all oh, those are two right there okay we're gonna just gently put them in there now we are going to put this on high for four we'll check it at four hours make sure the meatballs are done for four hours we may have to go to five if for example your um, slow cooker cooks a little cooler or because it's really really full this time okay but I think we're probably gonna be fine at four hours so I'm gonna put this on high and we're gonna cook it for four hours now my lid fits on there with this spaghetti squash in here but if it didn't fully fit on there the way what you could do is you could take a piece of foil around the outside of your slow cooker and tuck it in so that it actually makes a seal because what you're wanting to do is you're wanting that lid to keep that heat in so if your spaghetti squash has your lid like completely off then that's not going to keep all that heat in and things aren't going to cook as quickly as they need to but ours is fine right now what I would say is you would leave one end of that foil a little open so it could still vent out because all the slow cooker lids have these vents on top of them because um, they are letting some of the heat out but you don't want it to let a whole bunch of heat out at one time so that's a trick if by chance you get stuck with a spaghetti squash that's way too big Technically, I guess you could try and go ahead and cut it in half, but that sucker, those those spaghetti squash are really hard to cut through. So I would just put foil around your lid. I've done that plenty of times before cooking spaghetti squash with this recipe or at other times, and it's worked just fine. So let's go ahead and turn this on. We're going to turn it on high for four hours, and I will see you back here in three, two, one. So we're trying a different pasta sauce this time, guys. You know that with low carb, we like to use Rayos, and we love Rayos, except for the price tag. We don't like the Rayos price tag. And a crock posse member told us, I'm forgetting who exactly it is, um, a crock posse member told us, hey, check check your labels again at your grocery. Um, I, I'm pretty sure this is the brand they told us. Um, Mazetta, I can't say it, I don't know has a low carb count as well and it is like half the price so we totally check that out and this is i think our first taste test with this particular one so i'll have to tell you how it goes on with your regularly scheduled program and we are back okay it has been four hours on high and i'm pretty certain everything is done I'm gonna check my squash by just opening this foil up and I'm going to stick a knife in and make sure that it's soft and I do believe that it is fairly soft yeah it's soft okay so I'm going to pull out my squash I am certain my meatballs are done well here let's show you really quickly so you can see the meatballs are done. So we got two steps going on now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this foil to easily transfer over my spaghetti squash because we're going to need to cut it open and scrape out the insides. And then I'm going to use my, it's kind of like a spoon. I don't know, it's got a flat side to it. I like it for these purposes this guy. I'm going to use it to <laughs> break apart my meatballs. Now, when you do this like this, and especially when you stack things on each other, meatballs, homemade meatballs, especially in the slow cooker, are still going to keep kind of a red tinge to them. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. That doesn't mean that they aren't done. That just means, I don't think you can see it here, that just means, I'm honestly not sure what it means. I know it has to do with the, the way that, um, I think the 
oxygen hits it, somebody comment down below and say what what it is if you know what that is. <laughs> Anyhow, if you don't think it's done, if you're worried about it, a great way to check it would be to check it with a meat thermometer to make sure that it is. But I know that this is done just based off of having cooked it multiple times. And so what we're going to do is we're just, I just broke all of these guys apart. And while my squash is setting here, I'm going to pour in the rest of my tomato sauce. So I used a half a cup of this marinara sauce to make my meatballs. And I'm just going to pour the rest of it in here. And let it continue to cook and heat up that sauce while I work on the spaghetti squash. So what we're going to do, so I just stirred this in here, I'm going to cut my sc spaghetti squash in half and scoop out the seeds and then I'm going to use a spoon to break the spaghetti squash away from the sides of the squash to get what you traditionally think of as spaghetti squash. Now, one of the things I wanted to mention is this is not a replacement for spaghetti and meatballs. If folks try to tell you that, that it's going to taste like spaghetti and meatballs, they're telling you a lie. <laughs> this is going to taste like, well, frankly, squash and meatballs. And that's okay. You don't have to be low carb to enjoy it. But you also, we aren't going to be pretending like this is pasta. I'm, this is very hot and I'm trying. I am a mess right now and I apologize. Okay. So maybe I can cut through that core. I've never had that problem before. There we go. Okay. Spaghetti squash gets its name, I assume because as, as you can see it kind of looks like spaghetti in there so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to scoop out all these seeds and then when we start to scoop out the flesh of the squash it will break apart kind of a little bit looks a little bit like noodles so we are going to carefully try and get those seeds out so we don't take all of our squash too okay that squash so you want to get all the stringy pieces and seeds out and while you're doing this you can leave your slow cooker on high to get that pasta sauce hot if you're using a ninja or a multi cooker you can turn it even the stovetop feature on to kind of warm up that sauce faster too it's going to warm naturally with the meatballs too but if you see mine boiling it's because I popped it over to that okay my goodness this is hot I probably should have cut this open before messing with my meatballs so it could have cooled a little bit because it is hot okay got my seeds out and now I just want to show you how easy it is to pull the spaghetti you just run your spoon and it literally falls apart and creates little strings of pasta so or not pasta see I'm even doing it little strings of squash and so for all of you who like like um, zoodles and those kinds of things this is nature's zoodle pretty much um, it, it makes it already already broken up into the little pieces and so we're just gonna Scoop it out really easy like that. Scoop all that out and mix it in. Mikey's at an open mic tonight. That's why I'm doing this solo. <laughs> he will be back this evening and I know he's going to be very happy that this is what's going to be waiting on him as a leftover because this is one of his favorites. Now something you also might want to consider as you're scooping all this squash in there 
is you might want to salt it a little bit before you mix it into the sauce because it is, you know, that's a lot of vegetable right there to not have any kind of seasoning on its own before being added to the rest of it. Okay, so I've got one side done. Now I'm gonna try doing the other side. You just gotta be real careful with this because it's really hot and I'm making a big mess. mess. I have spaghetti squash everywhere. Let's try to get rid of some of this mess really quickly. I made a mess and dumped it all over my table up here. Okay. <laughs> my goodness. Okay, so what we're going to do now that I'm back with you, hopefully, um, <laughs> is I'm going to just salt that spaghetti squash a little bit, give it quite a bit before I stir it in with the meatballs. So at, at an appearance, it kind of does look like pasta in there, but it's not going to taste like pasta. It's going to taste like squash, like I said, but it's super, super yummy. So let's go on and stir this in. I'm going to turn this off now that everything is hot. You want to be gentle while you stir because your meatballs are in there and it's not too bad if they start to fall a little bit apart, but you don't want them to fall too much apart. Now we have our squash stirred in with our pasta sauce and with our meatballs. And so now it's ready to serve up. And I just like to eat mine with a little bit of mozzarella melted on top. Grab a piece of uh, this in our plate. I'm gonna get you a meatball in there. And some, uh, I keep calling it pasta now that I've been like, it's not pasta. It's been a long day, guys. We traveled today, so it's been a bit of a day. Okay, mozzarella cheese on top. And then I'm gonna come up and see ya. Right. Now Mikey likes uh, shredded Parmesan on his. So I'm gonna cut into, so here we go. So you can see the squash right there and then the meatballs right there. So we're gonna hop into this. I love it. It has a bit of a, um, almost like a vegetable soup. That's a, that may not be the uh, appetizing way to describe it, but like a, it does. It has like some of those flavors because you know that has like tomato with uh, vegetables and that kind of thing. Yeah, it's just really good. And the meatballs, I love these meatballs. They are so tender so so tender and I love that it all just cooked together mm -mm. <laughs> if you guys like this video I'd love for you to give us a thumbs up if you are not already a member of the crock posse we'd love for you to subscribe and become a member of our slow cooking family around here if you'd like notified every time we upload a video if you could click the bell down below that will notify you we call it the dingling but whatever you do we hope you laugh often eat good food and speak life bye guys and one more thing if you see a black line that I just now caught after going through all of that down coming down my face it's because while I was waiting for this to cook I was reading a sad book and I was tearing up I had no idea that my mascara had run all the way down my face 
I, I think I'm done today. Bye guys. <laughs> because I'm afraid I'm gonna forget. So I'm gonna say it now, I'll say it again later, and then if I don't forget later, then you can what use I'm this time. What I'm saying is you got 11 minutes before that clicks. Well, then so. you should shh. Jesus, take the <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Homemade meatballs and biscuit. Meatballs and biscuit. <laughs> it sounds like Addie when she was a baby. See, I told him I was gonna forget to talk about this with you guys. Like, it was really good, too. And it's got four net carbs per serving. Per half cup. Pretty good. And a lot cheaper. Thanks, Crock Posse, for letting us know that. I promise I've stopped crying now. <sighs> if you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think